The growing number of expats in Singapore tells the story of why the small country is their first choice. It's tempting for anyone who wishes to settle here, whether single or a family person. The lifestyle here may seem to add to the temptation, but you need to consider every aspect of living in Singapore before making the big move. Welcome to Travel Bee, and you are watching Pros and Cons of Singapore. If you like this type of video, make sure to subscribe our channel for more such content. Let's start. The temperature ranges from 86 to 30 to 33 degrees Celsius from January to December, making it perfect swimming weather year-round. It's a bit cooler in the evenings around 25 degrees Celsius, and most properties have air con. There's no need to bring jumpers or coats when you move here. The humidity here usually hovers around 70% or more, and will certainly take some getting used to. New arrivals often take two or three showers a day, just to cool down. It also rains a lot. Not drizzle, but proper heavy tropical downpours, particularly during monsoon season. There are many good public schools in Singapore, which are affordable and provide high-quality education. Private international schools are also a great choice, particularly for expats who want their child to continue with the school curriculum from their home country. Although, public education is the most affordable option in Singapore, most expats are required to pay more than the locals for school fees. Private international school tuition can be astronomical, but employers will sometimes cover education costs. Both public and private schools in Singapore tend to be oversubscribed, so expat parents should start the application process well in advance of their move. There are a number of private hospitals, public hospitals and outpatient clinics throughout the island to choose from. Those who have insurance can contact their provider for a list of recommended doctors and clinics. An unexpected trip to the doctor may end up being rather expensive, especially if the facility or doctor doesn't accept direct bill settlement from insurance companies. If this is the case, the patient is expected to pay for the consultation and any other services provided at the time of visit up front, including prescriptions for medication. Whether expats want to rent an HDB, which are government-owned flat or a privately owned condo, they'll have loads of options as high-rise developments are still springing up all over Singapore. Most of the privately owned condos and apartments, especially the new ones, have amenities such as pools, playgrounds, gyms and function rooms included on site. Landed homes can be found in the suburbs. Because space on the island is at a premium, rent in Singapore can be exorbitant. Expect to pay more for a place closer to the city center, Orchard Road, Holland Village, and other desirable neighborhoods. Expats willing to move further away from the central parts of town just might score a good deal. Getting around Singapore by bus or MRT is a piece of cake. Public transportation is cheap as chips. Two, even more train lines are expected to be added to the already extensive network, making even the furthest corners of the island easily accessible. Owning a car in Singapore is a seriously expensive undertaking. Between heavy customs duties, taxis and insurance fees, as well as the price of tolls and parking, the convenience of owning a car comes at a high price. Singapore is an exceptionally safe country, with low crime rates and a zero-tolerance policy when it comes to drugs. Pedestrians do not have the right of way in Singapore, so it's a smart idea to use crosswalks whenever possible. Sometimes bikes share the sidewalks with pedestrians, but sidewalks tend to be narrow so this can be dangerous. Although work is being done to rectify this, there is currently limited cycling infrastructure in Singapore, and most cars and trucks do not look out for bikes on the road. It usually doesn't take new rivals long to make friends in Singapore, be they expat or local. There are several online forums and social media groups that provide both expats and locals with the opportunity to come together over shared interests. 
Otherwise, be on the lookout for organizations that host social events, as these are great places to meet like-minded individuals. Becoming a member of an expert club or society, such as the American Association or the British Club, is another great way to find out what's on in Singapore. Singapore puts a heavy sin tax on alcoholic beverages, making a night out while in the town a costly affair. The nicer clubs and bars sell drinks at a premium, 